I'm Kath, welcome back to my channel. Thank you very much for joining me for my latest video, which is an honest review of my Make 9 2022. So at the beginning of 2022, the beginning of last year, I put together a list of nine patterns I wanted to sew over the course of the year. And they were all new patterns to me. I think most of them I had my eye on for a while, so it was a good opportunity to sort of commit to sewing them over the last year and try them out. And now we've reached the end of 2022, I thought it'd be a good time to look back over that list and sort of share with you how I got on with sewing those patterns and do a really honest review. So I'm going to talk about how I found the patterns to sew up, I'm going to share my makes, I'm going to talk about how much I've enjoyed wearing them, whether I haven't reached them and why, and yet also share whether I did actually make all nine. So that's my plan for this video, so hopefully you'll enjoy seeing a little bit of my plans and how I got on with them. And yeah, it's a real mixed bag, I guess, I think, in terms of my Make 9 for 2022, so I'm looking forward to kind of talking it all through with you. So yeah, I'll get started on the first pattern. Oh, and I should mention, I usually start my videos off by sharing what I'm wearing, but actually what I'm wearing today is one of my Make 9 from 2022, so I'll talk about this top um, in the video a little bit later. So I thought I'd kick off this video by sharing one of the earlier patterns I tackled in 2022. And this first pattern I'm going to share is a little bit of a departure from the normal type of patterns I pick because it is a big four pattern. And I did sew a few big four patterns when I first started sewing, but then I got really into sewing indie patterns. And I thought in 2022 it'd be nice to revisit a big four pattern and see how I found it, how I found the instructions to follow. And it might encourage me to maybe try a few more big four patterns instead of always opting for the indie ones. So it's this pattern here that I chose to sew which is New Look 6682, which is a really pretty woven dress pattern that I thought had some lovely details to it. And I hadn't seen anything similar um, on the indie pattern front, so I thought it'd be a really nice one to try. So there are two main variations included in this pattern, and this is the version I really like the look of and I thought was really pretty. But this woven dress, it's kind of pulled in at the waist and it's got sort of gathering at the front and back. At the back, it's got an invisible zip and the collar is quite unusual, it's hard to see in this picture, but it's kind of a pleated collar that's folded over to add a really pretty detail and it's secured the back with a couple of buttons. And it's got this quite billowy sleeve within this sort of fitted um, cuff and it's got a sleeve vent and again little buttons that secure the sleeve and then quite a billowy skirt too. See, I thought it'd be quite a pretty one and I think when I started um, sewing the kind of big four patterns, I mainly tried beginner patterns, but they seemed a bit of a step up. So I thought it'd be a good challenge for me to see how I got on with it. So yeah, this is my version of the new look 6682 that I sewed up. And as you can see, I made it in this black fabric. It is a viscose chalet that I got from Minerva. Um, it's really nice, um, swishy, drapey fabric that works really well for this pattern, I think. And I think they still have this range of viscose chalet fabrics in stock, so I'll link them down below. And the main reason I went for this fabric was because it was quite reasonably priced. And I made this um, version of the new look 6682 as a bit of a wearable twirl. I kind of wanted to test out the pattern in terms of um, the fitting and also just generally kind of walk it through with a twirl before I went on to make my proper version. So yeah, this is my wearable twirl version of the pattern. But it's got some really lovely pretty details to it. Here is the collar with this sort of fold over top, which I ended up top stitching down. To be honest, I found this collar really tricky to sew because you cut the pattern pieces for it on the bias and I found it stretched out quite a lot. So I didn't really enjoy it sewing that bit. And I think if I revisited th that this pattern, I'd think of another way of sewing that detail because I did find that a really tricky point. And then at the back here, it's got the invisible zip and it's got these um, buttons at the top and I made rouleau loops to secure those buttons. I think the pattern suggested making thread loops, but I thought rouleau loops would add kind of a pretty detail. It's also got little buttons on the cuff here and I did rouleau loops there, which I think is another pretty detail to it. And then you can see at the back and the front, it's got this sort of gathering detail, which is quite pretty as well. So this is my version. I think in terms of sizing, um, I had a look at the sort of uh, measurements on the pattern. I also had a look at the finished garment measurements, which were quite hard to find. I think I found the waist measurement maybe on the skirt pattern piece buried somewhere in the pattern. Um, so a bit different to my experience from indie patterns. I had to really look hard to find those measurements, but I think I might have gone for a 
um, six at the bust and maybe graded out to an eight at the waist possibly, um, based on having a look at those finished garment measurements and figuring them out. And the sizing came out well actually. Um, I think I did actually lengthen the body slightly and I didn't really need to. I find it comes down perhaps a little bit too low on me now. So maybe the pattern was made for someone a bit taller than I was expecting. I'm not sure, but yeah, that's something I'd probably change if I made it again. But it came together okay. I didn't find the big four pattern instructions as daunting as I thought I might. I found them fairly easy to follow through. I think one thing I did find, they didn't have any details about how to insert the invisible zip. So I referred back to another pattern on how to do that. But it came together okay. But if I'm kind of being honest about this one, really, it is probably not one I'd reach for. Um, I haven't worn it at all since I made it, actually. I think because it just feels a bit too formal on me. Um, maybe because I chose this black colour and it's got this sort of high collar and long sleeves and also quite a long skirt. Um, the pattern, as you can see, has a skirt designed to come just below the knee, which I made this version as because I kind of just wanted to go based on the pattern and see how it turned out. And I think when I try it on, it just feels a bit too much on me with the length and the billowy sleeves and the high neck and everything. So yeah, it isn't one I've reached for at all. And like I mentioned, I was planning on revisiting the pattern and making a sort of proper version. This having been the wearable toile, I had an idea of making a version maybe in a pretty fabric I'd chosen, like a pretty viscose. But I haven't done that yet, and I'm not sure whether I will or not. Um, I did have an idea that maybe I could make it a little bit more casual, perhaps by changing the cuffs from sort of formal cuffs into just a simple elasticated cuff, and then maybe by chopping a little bit off the length, just to make it into a bit more of a party dress and less of a kind of formal feeling dress. But I haven't done that yet, and I'm not sure whether I will. Um, I'm a bit reluctant to kind of then buy more fabric and try it again, because I haven't really worn this one and haven't really thought about reaching for it. So unfortunately, this one's probably not the most successful of my Make 9 2022. It's just not one I reach for at all. I can't think of many situations where I'd go for it. So although it was a great fun to try out a sort of big four pattern, I did enjoy it giving it a go and the challenge of it. Yeah, it's probably not one of my most successful or wearable of my Make 9 this year. So the next pattern that I wanted to talk about that I sewed up this year as part of my Make 9 plans is a pattern that I'd wanted to sew for ages and I was really excited to finally give it a try this year. And it is this pattern here. It is the Bloomsbury blouse pattern by Nina Lee, which is a woven blouse pattern. And I just think it is so pretty and has some really unusual, slightly different details to it. So it is an Edwardian inspired blouse pattern. It's got this sort of collar and you can add an optional ruffle to it. And there's also an optional ruffle on the sleeves, which I think are about a three quarter length style sleeve. Then it's got this really pretty large ruffle around the bodice. It goes all the way around to the back, as you can see and it's got a button down back. It's got darts at the front for a bit of shaping too. So yeah, I thought it was a bit pretty and unusual with the buttons down the back for the blouse and with this lovely ruffle. And I think you can make this ruffle in two sizes, a more subtle, smaller ruffle or a larger, more flamboyant ruffle. So yeah, I was really keen to give this pattern a go. And so for this one, unlike the new look 6682, I jumped straight in with my fancy fabric and I made my version in this really, really pretty Atelier Brunette Viscose crepe fabric. It's another one that comes from Minerva and it's still in stock, I think, this one. I'll link it down below. It comes in a few very pretty colourways. And I really love this colourway that's got kind of a black base and this sort of taupe detail on it. I thought it was really pretty and would go really well with this pattern. So this is my Bloomsbury blouse. As you can see, I went for the larger, more flamboyant ruffle. I thought it would work well with this drapey fabric and not be too much. Then it's got the, um, the collar here. I didn't add the extra ruffle on. I thought I'd find that a bit too much around my neck. Um, and it's got a button down back here. And in terms of um, sizing and adjustments, um, I'm kind of fairly comfortable with my sizing on Nina Lee patterns because I've made a few, which is one of the reasons I was quite happy on cutting straight into my proper fabric rather than doing a twirl. Um, so I went for the size six on the bust and then um, graded out to the size eight on the waist and hips, which is pretty much based on my measurements. And I find that yeah, Nina Lee patterns fit me quite well if I go for those sizes. I think I did lengthen the bodice slightly just because I thought I'd quite like to be able to tuck this blouse into jeans. So I thought a little bit of length couldn't be a bad thing. But otherwise, I didn't make any adjustments and it came together really nicely. It's definitely a bit of a fiddly sew, particularly sewing this ruffle in. I felt it took a bit of time and effort and you wouldn't want to rush it. And then one adjustment I made was to add an extra button here to the back yoke. 
that isn't designed to be a button here but I thought with this drapey fabric it might end up kind of hanging open a little bit and getting a bit cold around my back there so I added tiny strips of interfacing to both pieces of the yoke and then just put a little buttonhole in there just to keep it together there but otherwise um, it came together really nicely I do find Nina Lee patterns their instructions are really good and they do come together well and I've really, really enjoyed wearing this one this year. Um, I don't wear it a great deal because it does feel a bit fancy for everyday use, but I have just put it on for a couple of days when I wanted to be a bit fancy, even if I wasn't doing anything particular. And I really enjoyed wearing it and found it really comfy too. This viscose crepe fabric is so lovely and soft. It's really nice to wear. And I'll put a picture up so you can see what it looks like on. I'm not sure whether I'd revisit this pattern anytime soon, just because I feel like it's quite a standout piece with this big ruffle. And I'm not sure I need too many of them in my wardrobe I think one is probably enough but I really do love this version so I'm definitely glad um yeah I tried this one as part of my make nine so the next pattern that I put on my make nine 2022 list is one I chose to fill a real gap in my wardrobe for a lightweight summer dressing gown which is something I hadn't had for a while so I thought in 2022 I'd finally try to sew one up and I had actually made a lightweight summer dressing gown when I first started sewing it was one of my earliest makes and I made it using one of the big four patterns, but it hadn't really turned out like I'd wanted. I think I'd chosen slightly too thick interfacing, so it had been a bit stiff around the collar. And also I'd sort of gone for too large a size, so there was loads of fabric when I tried to do it up. So it wasn't one I reached for at all. So I thought, yeah, I thought I'd give it a try this year to try and make one that I would reach for more. And I decided to give one a try using this pattern here, which is the Haley Robe by Tammy Handmade. And it's the first pattern by Tammy Handmade I think I tried. I'll show you the line drawings for the Haley Robe. It's quite a simple dressing gown pattern, which is what I wanted. So this is the dressing gown pattern. It's got a slightly dropped shoulder and the option for a shorter, shorter version or a longer version that I guess would be great for a kind of a cosy winter dressing gown. So I decided to make this version only perhaps a little bit longer um, just to yeah, kind of cover me up maybe down to my knees. I thought that's about the length I'd want it. And I chose the Haley dressing gown pattern because it looked like it was a fairly fitted dressing gown pattern and I didn't want anything too oversized um, having made my first version the um, older big four one end up being really big so this is why I went for the Haley robe because it looked like it was a little bit more fitted. So I chose to make my Haley robe in a really beautiful cotton lawn fabric that I got from Fabric Godmother um, with a sort of teal base and these orange kind of large scale tiger print on that I thought was really really cute um, and really cool. It was one of Fabric Godmother's vintage prints from the sort of archives. Um, yeah, and I really loved the look of it. And I really enjoyed sewing with it, actually. Um, it took a while um, figuring out the kind of placement of the pattern because it was such a large scale tiger print. But I enjoyed taking my time over it. And in terms of sizing, um, the, the Haley Road pattern doesn't have finished garment measurements, which I did miss a little bit. So I just went based on the measurements um, given for kind of each size. And I went for the size six. I think my measurements were slightly in between a six and eight and I sized down to a size six because I thought I didn't want it to end up being too oversized. So I sewed it up and I'll put a picture up of what my Haley robe turned out like. And actually I was really happy with it when I first finished it. I thought it was really cute. I quite liked the fit of it being a little bit more slim fit than my first version. And it was quite a nice simple sew. It came together quite well. But actually I don't actually have this robe anymore. I've gifted it on because when I came to actually trying it in the summer, I made it in the winter and then I kind of held it back, tried it in the summer and I just didn't really get on with it because it actually ended up being a bit too tight fitting, particularly around the armhole I found it was just a little bit tight for me and often in summer I go for like an oversized t-shirt in bed so when I was putting the Haley robe over the top of the t-shirt so kind of t-shirt sleeves are sort of rucking up and it didn't really sort of go on very well over the top so I think maybe it wasn't the best choice of a robe pattern for me in the end in hindsight and maybe I think I was so keen to avoid the pitfalls from my first um, dressing gown I made that I went sort of chose a pattern that maybe wasn't quite suitable for my needs and I should have thought a bit more clearly about what I wanted. And actually more recently if you saw my vlogmas leading up to Christmas I decided to try again and try a new pattern for a lightweight dressing gown and I actually went for the named larger dressing gown pattern and I sewed up that dressing gown pattern and I think that one is more of a winner for me in terms of the style of it. It's a bit more loose on the sleeves. Um, I chose a viscose fabric which is lovely and drapey so not too kind of bulky um, even though it's a bit more oversized um, and that one's turned out a lot better actually so although I enjoyed giving this pattern a go and I did love the dressing gown and I love the fabric unfortunately it didn't turn out to be a make I actually used so it wasn't one of my most successful of my make nine unfortunately. <laughs> 
So the next pattern that I wanted to talk about that was on my Make 9 2022 list is the pattern I'm wearing today. And this is the Amin blouse pattern, which came from this magazine here, which is Five Mood magazine issue number 16. And I never actually made a Five Mood pattern until like, they released the Amin blouse. And I saw it come out and I thought it was really, really pretty and it went straight to the top of my Make 9 plans. So yeah, I was really keen to sew this one up, but I'll show you the line drawing so you can see all the really pretty details for this blouse. So here are the line drawings. The blouse has quite a simple shape to it overall. It's got this round neck that's finished with bias binding and then a button down front. And then the body is quite a straight fit and the sleeves are quite a straight fit too. And they're finished with just a simple turn up at the end, so no cuff or anything. But the lovely details, I think, on the Amin blouse are the gathering details. At the front, there's this V shape with gathering underneath. And in the back, there's a yoke too that also has gathering underneath. And I thought those details were so lovely and a bit different. And I really wanted to give this one a go. And yeah, the Amin blouse has been one of my most successful Make 9 sews. I think I've made two versions and I love wearing them both. This is my first version I made and it's very pretty viscose chalet fabric. This is another one that came from Minerva. If it's in stock, I'll link it down below. It's got this lovely sort of deep red base with these pretty blue flowers on. And I think a drapey fabric works really well for the Amin blouse. You wouldn't want anything that was too bulky because of all the gathering. The only thing I think with this print is it's so busy, it's hard to see the details of the gathering. I'll turn around a bit so you can hopefully see a bit of the back. I love how the viscose sort of falls and drapes at the back with that gathering. But yeah, this blouse sewed up really nicely. Um, I think I made the smallest size. I had a look and my measurements were kind of on the borderline between the extra small and the small sizing for Five Mood. But when I looked at the finished garment measurements in the magazine, they looked like there was plenty of room in this blouse. So I sized down to the extra small and that's absolutely fine. There's still plenty of room in it. I think I might have lengthened the sleeves slightly I'm on it and possibly the body too because I like to tuck it into a pair of jeans or a skirt or whatever I'm wearing. And it sewed up really nicely. One thing I would recommend with five mood patterns is if you get the magazine, the instructions in the magazine are fairly brief and mainly sort of picture based. But if you go on the five mood website, you can access more detailed instructions that are more more wordy and sort of hold your hand a bit more through it. So I accessed those instructions, the Amin blouse, and they really helped me kind of work through all the details on this pattern. And yeah, it sewed up really nicely. I think there's a couple of things that I changed from my first version to my second version in terms of the construction. One thing was, this is my first version. I found the way you make the um, placket at the front, you interface the whole placket piece and then fold it over. So you end up with quite a lot of interfacing once you have two placket pieces on top of each other. And this interfacing strip at the front feels a little bit stiff, even though I use quite a lightweight interfacing on it. So for my second version, which I'll show you in a moment, I only interface half of each placket pattern piece, so I don't have as many layers of interfacing, so the front is a little bit more fluid than this version. But I still love this version, so I wear it anyway. And also, at the order in which you attach different bits, I find, personally, I like to attach the placket and then hem the whole blouse at once. But the way this blouse is constructed per the instructions, you kind of hem the blouse and then add the placket on afterwards. So with my second version, I just changed it around slightly so I could add the placket on a slightly earlier point. But that was more personal preference than anything else. Um, but yeah, this is my first version. I really love it. I went for little blue buttons to kind of pick out the blue and the flowers. It's really nice and comfy to wear. It's not too fitted. I quite like the neckline. Um, I'm not always a big fan of like a full collar around my neck. So I like how this is quite a simple neckline. It's not so wide. That, that kind of it will show my bra straps. It's quite a nice width to it. I think it's quite pretty, the sort of um, your neckline. And I quite like how it's quite a simple cuff as well. It just feels quite a casual, relaxed blouse that I can easily pop on with a pair of jeans. And I'll put a picture up so you can see what this one looks like on. And then for my second version of the Amin blouse, I really wanted to choose a fabric that would really showcase all of the pretty details at like the gathering, which this busy floral print kind of does hide a little bit, I guess. So here is my second version of the Amin blouse. And again, I chose a viscose for this version because I think viscose works really well for this pattern. And this viscose fabric came from Rainbow Fabrics, but unfortunately I don't think it's in stock there anymore. But I think it's a really cute fabric. It's got this white base with these black stars and hearts on. And this fabric is slightly sheer, so you can see a little bit of the sort of seams underneath the blouse. And I think that's really pretty. And then it also helps to show off the general details of the gathering at the front and the back. So I made this blouse pretty much exactly the same as this version with slightly lengthened sleeves and slightly lengthened body. The only difference is how I attached the placket and the fact that I didn't um, add as many layers of interfacing. So it's a bit more fluid than my first version. But 
Yeah, I really love both versions of this blouse. I'll put a picture up of this one too so you can see what it looks like on. So I would definitely say the Amin blouse is one of my most successful Make 9 2022 projects. I really enjoyed sewing both versions up and I really enjoy wearing them. I think they're a perfect blouse that you kind of dress up or dress down and I think I'll definitely make more in the future um, if I see fabrics I think would work well. So yeah, I really loved um, these two versions. I'm glad I put this pattern on my Make 9. So the next pattern I included on my Make 9 2022 was for a jersey t-shirt. And I've already got a couple of jersey t-shirt patterns that I really love and I've made a few of, but I thought it might be fun to try a new one. And this is a pattern I'd seen around for a while and it's by a pattern company that I really like, so I thought I'd give it a go. And it is this pattern here, the Astaire T by French Navy. So it's quite a boxy, um, cropped fit t-shirt. I'll show you the line drawing so you can see a bit more detail to it. You can make it either as a short sleeve or a long sleeve, as you can see here. Then it's got an optional patch pocket. It's got a split hem. And if you make the short sleeve version, it's got a cuff you can add to. So I thought I'd give this pattern a go and I decided for this one to sew up a wearable toile because I have, I've been trying this year to use up some of my jersey scraps and I found I had quite a decent sized scrap that would, um, I'd be able to try out for this pattern. Then I could give it a try, check the fit, see how kind of oversized or fitted it was and then maybe adjust it slightly to make my kind of perfect version in a fabric I'd actually chosen rather than a scrap I had left over from another project. So the fabric I ended up using for my wearable toile version of the Asterity is a fabric I had left over from making a top for my mum. It was a cotton jersey fabric and when I had a look at it and um, I figured out I had just enough of it to be able to cut out the Astaire top pattern pieces. And it was a Dalmatian print cotton jersey, quite a fun fabric. And I put up my Astaire tee so you can see what the fabric looked like and how my Astaire tee turned out. I think I didn't have quite enough of the fabric for the cuffs but I wanted to add the cuffs so I used black cotton jersey for the cuffs and also added on a black patch pocket too. And the, the um, Astaire tee sewed up really nicely. Um, I always find French navy patterns sew up really well. I think I made a size A at the bust and then graded out to a size B at the hips because when I looked at the finished garment measurements, they didn't look like there was a great deal of ease around the hips area. And yeah, it sewed up really nicely, but actually I don't have this t-shirt anymore just because I wasn't really reaching for it. I think because I made it in a print that I'd chosen for someone else and it wasn't necessarily a print I'd have gone for myself. It wasn't one I was wearing, so I thought it'd be better to pass it on. And I haven't actually revisited the Astaire t-shirt and made my final version. I do have some thoughts about a few tweaks I might like to make if I made another version. I think I might size up slightly because it turned out a little bit more fitted than I was expecting. Um, I guess I should have known that from looking at the fitted um, finished garment measurements and knowing it was kind of fairly close fitting on the hips. But I think next time if I made it again, I'd quite like it a bit more boxy and loose fitting. So that's probably what I'd do if I make another version at some point. So it is a pattern I will probably revisit, but my Make 9 version I made this year probably wasn't the most successful. I guess it was only a wearable toile, so it wasn't designed to be the finished version. And at some point, hopefully, I'll make a new version that I really love. So every year on my Make 9 list, I like to include a knitting pattern along with the sewing patterns because I do love to knit as well as to sew. So it's always fun to pick a new knitting pattern to try as well. And Make 9 2022 is no exception, so my next make I've got to share with you is my knitted make. And this is one I made using a kit that I've been eyeing up for quite a while, so I asked for it for either Christmas or my birthday at the beginning of last year. And it's a kit to make up this sweater here, which is the Coco Sailor Sweater. So it's quite a relaxed, boxy fit sweater with a dropped shoulder, and you knit it up using Wool and the Gang's Shiny Happy Cotton Yarn, which comes in lots of different colours, so you can choose which colour you want to use the main colour and for the stripe. And it's quite a nice, quick, simple knit because you knit it up in stocking stitch with eight millimeter needles. So quite chunky needles. So it comes together quite quickly, this one. And here is my um, Coco Sailor sweater. That I really enjoyed knitting up this year. It was quite a quick make. Um, I went for the main color as red and then white as the stripe color. I think that's quite a cute combination. And it came together really nicely. It was quite a quick knit because the needles are so chunky and it's quite a sort of loose weave to it, as you can see. So it's probably not one you'd wear kind of for cosy sort of winter weather, but maybe like as a transitional sweater with maybe a t-shirt underneath or something like that. It came together really nicely. I made the size one and the only adjustment I made, which is really unusual for me, is to actually take a little bit of length out of the sleeves because when I knitted them per the pattern, they ended up really long. So I took a few rows off the sleeves before I sewed the whole thing together at the end. And I really love this sweater. I'll put a picture up so you can see what it looks like on. As you can see, it is kind of relaxed fit. Um, 
But actually, I have to admit, I haven't worn this sweater since I made it. But not because I don't love it. I think it's just one of those things where I may be a bit worried that I might spoil it if I wear it. Um, it might get pulled or something like that. So one of my goals when the weather gets slightly warmer is to get this sweater out straight away because it is one I love and I do want to enjoy it rather than just keeping it in a cupboard and admiring it but not wearing it. So it is, I think, a successful make. I just need to actually get it out there and enjoy it wearing it. So yeah, that is my Coco Sailor sweater. I definitely recommend it if you want quite a simple, speedy knitting project and it's quite fun to choose the two colours. Yeah, I really enjoyed choosing these two colours. I'm definitely going to wear it more in 2023. <laughs> so the next pattern I chose for my Make 9 2022 list is a pattern from this book here which is Breaking the Pattern by Named Clothing and this is a book that I've had for quite a long time since quite early when I started sewing but I never sewed anything from it so I thought for 2022 I'm going to give one of the patterns from this book a go and I decided to make the Sarast shirt dress which I thought looked really pretty and I do love a shirt dress. And so here is the Sarast shirt dress pattern. It's a really lovely shirt dress pattern with a couple of pretty details to it. So it's got a sort of gathered skirt on the shirt dress, but this interesting sort of flat front to it. So the button placket pieces aren't gathered there at the front, which I thought was quite a nice idea. It's got yoke on the back and a proper collar. And the collar's got this lovely little ruffle detail on the front, which I thought was really cute. So yeah, I thought it'd be a fun one to try. And um, the only pattern I think I'd made before this pattern by named clothing was the Kyolo wrap. And I love that pattern. So I hoped I'd love the Sarast shirt dress pattern just as much. So here is my Sarast shirt dress that I made. And I made it in this really pretty Dashwood Studio cotton lawn, which is so light and soft. It's really, really lovely to wear. I got this from Minerva, and if it's still in stock, I'll link it down below. It was lovely to sew with, really stable like cotton lawn is, and really nice to wear too. And I had fun by adding those little navy buttons, because this fabric's kind of got like a very light grey base, and then all these different colours in it, all these different little dots, and there are navy dots, so I thought I'd pick them out with the buttons, which go all the way down the dress. Um, and unusually for me, I'm, I kind of went for the dress per the pattern, which is kind of designed to be more of a midi length shirt dress. And I'd usually go for a shorter length um, shirt dress. But actually, I've really, really enjoyed wearing this one. And I love the midi length of it. And whenever I've, ever I've worn this one, I've got compliments with it. So, yeah, it's been a really nice one to wear. So as you can see, it's got this lovely little ruffle detail on the collar. And I also added on a ruffle on the sleeves just for an extra bit of fun. So you can see the ruffle there. It's got this lovely flat front and then gathering. Has it got pockets? Um... That's the only thing I think this dress doesn't have. It hasn't got pockets. So maybe if I made it again, I might add pockets on. But it sewed up really nicely. Um, I made a size one at the bust and then graded out to a size two at the waist based on my measurements. And I found that fitted really nicely. And what I particularly like about the fit of this one is it, I find it fits really well all around the shoulders as well. So it just seems to fit me really well, this pattern. So it was really enjoyable So, And I really enjoy wearing this one too. I'll put a picture up so you can see what it looks like on. I would definitely like to revisit this pattern. Um, I haven't revisited it yet just because I just enjoy wearing this one so much. I thought I didn't need another version. I'm going to wear this one loads this year. So it's one I've got loads of wear out of actually. Um, and it's really converted me to a midi length shirt dress. So yeah, really successful make this one. I love the pattern. I'll definitely be revisiting it. So the next make that I've got to share is not one that I had planned at the beginning of 2022, like all the other garments I've shared so far. When I put together my Make 9 list, I usually like to reserve one space for a new pattern release in the year. Because um, I do love to try new patterns, so I think it's fun to include one sort of question mark. I don't know what it's going to be. And so this make is that, um, fill that space, that question mark space. But it's a bit of an unusual one because it's not a totally new pattern release in 2022. It was a new expansion pack release. And it was this expansion pack here, the Forsyth Dress Expansion Pack by French Navy. So I already had the original Forsyth dress pattern, which is this one here, and I sewed it up a couple of times and really loved wearing it. It's this really pretty woven dress with this sort of panelled bodice. It's got a button down back, and I, what I love about this pattern is it's kind of a relaxed day dress, but it's not oversized, but it's not fitted, and it's really, really comfy to wear. And I love the lovely details of the panelled bodice too. So in 2022, French Navy released this really cool expansion pack for the Forsyth dress. Here it is. It basically turned it from a sort of summery dress with short sleeved into a sort of wintry dress. The button placket got moved from the back to the front um, and these beautiful sleeves got added on. These sort of large sleeves, with this sort of, um, I don't know how to describe them. It's a yeah bishop sleeve that are gathered into a little cuff at the bottom. Really pretty and the kind of cuffed a little high low. So a lovely detail. 
And so yeah, I was really excited by this expansion pack and definitely wanted to sew it up. And French Navy kindly gifted me this expansion pack. So I definitely was keen to sew up straight away and use it as my question mark on my make nine list. So here is my expansion pack for size dress I sewed. And I really love this one. I sewed it in this um, cotton fabric from um, Simply Fabrics Brixton. I don't think this fabric is in stock, but I'll link the website down below because they often have lovely cotton fabrics coming through. It's like in a kind of micro check and it's lovely soft cotton. It's a bit more substantial than a cotton lawn and a bit softer or kind of it's got a bit more of a texture to it, I guess. You can sort of feel almost the kind of woven um, check detail in it. And I added on a little bit of um, bias binding that I made in some blue fabric I had left over from another project. So it's a little less bulky, I think, than the fabric itself. And I thought it's a pretty detail. And so you can see it's got the button placket down the front. I use these kind of navy buttons. So you can really see the feature. I also added, did a little bit of top stitching down of the kind of panelling. So you can really see the panelling there too. And it came together really nicely. As you can see, the sleeves are really cool with a kind of slightly oversized. I did reduce the size slightly because I didn't want them to be too voluminous and this lovely cuff at the bottom and the whole dress came together really well and I really love it. I'll put a picture up of me wearing it so you can see what it looks like on. Now I haven't worn this dress so much yet but mainly because um, when I made it the weather suddenly went colder afterwards. I think this dress is probably better for the transitional weather because it's not super cosy. I did layer it um, over a Freya top kind of like a a mock turtleneck top um, in cozy in the colder weather because I wanted to be able to wear it but I think it will look best just on its own without a top underneath so I'm looking forward to wearing this one more when spring comes and I think I'm going to enjoy wearing it a lot then so that was my extra pattern that I wasn't sure what it was going to be that I put on my list and I'm really happy with it and I definitely would like to make um the four size dress again maybe in a different fabric I'm not sure what but yeah it's really fun make and I really love it so I'm glad the French Navy released that expansion pack this year and I could put it on my make nine list <laughs> that brings me to the final pattern that I included on my Make 9 2022 list and if you're wondering at the beginning of the video whether I completed all of my Make 9 this year well I didn't <laughs> I didn't finish this last pattern actually and I think it's the first year since I've been doing Make 9 that I haven't made all nine patterns so I was a little bit disappointed in a way but actually it is just supposed to be fun the make nine and I don't want to put too much pressure on myself to kind of rush myself to finish something just for the sake of the make nine so I'd rather take my time over this last make and you, you'll see why when I show you it why I want to take my time over it and not rush it because it's quite a meaty involved project and the pattern is this one here it is the Kelly Anorak pattern by Closet Core Patterns. So I've had this pattern and I've had the fabric that I want to use for my Kelly Anorak for absolutely ages. And I did make a bit of progress on it this year, which I'll show you in a moment, but I'll show you the line drawings for the Kelly Anorak first. So it's a really classic Anorak style pattern. I think I could really get a lot of use out of this one if I ever do get around to making it. Hopefully I will at some point. Um, I'd like to make this version here that has a hood. Then it has this really cool sort of gusseted flat pocket, which is a pretty detail. You can also add an optional drawstring around the waist to bring it in. And then down the front, there's a zipper placket that also then has a, a fold over sort of popper placket over the top too. So it is quite an involved make. There are loads of pattern pieces. Um, there's loads of resources and help for it on the Closet Core website. So I just think I need to be in the right mood to really get stuck into it. But I did make some progress this year because I thought for this one, the fit was really important. So I wanted to get it just right. So I thought I'd make a wearable, not a wearable twirl, just a pure twirl of it first before I cut into my proper fabric. So I've got some bits of the twirl here. You might have seen these much earlier in the year when I sort of got a little bit into it and then I sort of put it aside for a while. So, so here is my um, hood lining um, that I've sewn. And then I've also got the outer hood as well and you've got a bit of top stitching there that I've been practicing on the hood so those are a couple of pieces of my toile and then this is the main jacket so I've made some quite good progress on this jacket actually and um, there are some the gusted flat pockets that's the one I put the popper on the wrong way up this is why I'm sort of practicing for this one and this is one where I put the popper on the right way you can see you can kind of put your hand in there and it's got this sort of 3d pocket which is quite cool it was quite fun to sew actually and I've got the drawstring added around the waist and um, the sleeves are in there's a little sort of flap at the back here too. So I've had a go of quite a few of the details, but I sort of got to a certain point and I think I just wanted to break from it and I haven't picked it up since. And also I'm not sure on the sizing at the moment. It feels like it might be a little bit tight. So if I have to revisit the sizing, it means tracing out a lot of pattern pieces again. So I kind of just lost momentum on it. I've got the fabric here to show you as well that I actually want to make the final version in. It's a lovely... Robert Kaufman twill fabric um, I got from Sew Me Sunshine quite a long time ago which I think would be perfect anorak fabric 
I also haven't made any decisions about what I want to line it with. I do want to line it, but I don't know how thick a lining to go for. So it's just one of those ones where there are lots of things I'm not sure about that I need to decide on. Um, I just haven't been in the right mood to pick it back up again. So yeah, who knows if it'll be something I complete in 2023 or not. But um, yeah, that is why I'm an unsuccessful, um, unmade um, item for my Make 9 2022 list, the Kelly Anorak by Closet Core Patterns. So I hope you enjoyed hearing all about my Make 9 2022 list and how I got on with each of the patterns on the list this year. It's been a real mixed bag, I guess. There's been some patterns there that I really enjoyed sewing and I've really enjoyed wearing and I'd definitely make again. And then some patterns that I probably won't be reaching for anytime soon. And then obviously I've got my one unfinished garment too. So yeah, a real mixed bag. But I guess that's what the sewing's about. It's nice to try new things and not everything works out like you want them to. But you always learn something from every project I find. So thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, please do subscribe. And if you press the bell icon too, it means you'll be notified when my future videos come out. So yeah, I hope you're having a very good start to the new year and I'll see you again for another video soon. Bye!